This is the Rock House Center Podcast, and I'm John Murphy. And I'm Beth Murphy. We're here today to talk about breaking free of grief because it's such a such an important topic. Many clients come to Rock House Center because they're grieving a loss in their life in one way or another. Obviously, loss of a loved one or a significant person in their life. They may also be grieving just loss of the way that they envision their life to be with their health or their marriage or their job, many other things, their sense of community. What we see is a really pronounced, in fact, even a profound contrast in how people experience grief just from when they begin the process at Rock House Center to when they're, they come out on the other side. And the difference in that really relatively short period of time is truly remarkable. And another remarkable contrast are just the reports that we get from former clients who've been through difficult situations, the death of a child, a really threatening diagnosis, or just all the losses of the year 2020 and the way our former clients report to us that they experienced those things completely differently than how they would have experienced them before going through the process at Rock House Center. That contrast is what we want to get at today in terms of why, what happens when a person's a client here and then later is sustained so that two years or 10 years after they were a client at Rock House, they're experiencing losses very differently. And that is getting at God's promise of how he wants to help us grieve. There's so much grief out there that people have to understand that there is an answer. It doesn't have to linger. There are folks who have been caught in grief and are grieving and have been done so for sometimes decades. We want the world to know that that is not the outcome that has to necessarily be where you're stuck, that there is a way out, that there is a process. God does have an answer. We see people having breakthroughs in grief. And yes, some people go through our entire program, but then we've also had people come in and had one meeting and get it and understand where we're going, do what needs to happen in a fairly short period of time, and also get pretty significant movement very quickly. There is an answer to grieving, and it's not a place where you just endure it, you just hang on to it, you try to crowd it out with other behavior, you try to fix it through through some sort of distraction. You try to replace the source of the grief or the object of the grief with just something else that you ultimately lose it later and the grief comes back. And to begin to understand grief and what sets grief up and what keeps it going, it's helpful to look at why it is that people experience loss differently. There are those who experience loss and there's some pain of the, of the loss of the thing, but they process through in either a period of weeks or months, then they've kind of moved on and they've dealt with that and they're not stuck in it anymore. Then someone else who has the very same loss and, and under the very same circumstances can find themselves stuck in a place of grieving for years, if not decades. This, the distinction of how it is that, that grief is experienced or how enduring it is, is not about the specific thing that's lost. It's not riding on the, on the object of the grief but it is really about the condition of the heart and the degree to which the heart has a level of connectivity or, or a level of dependency on the thing that is lost. So we need to start thinking about grief differently, that grief is really more about a dependency, the level of dependency and the depth of that dependency on the object of our loss versus the thing itself. Just replacing that thing with another thing is not really the answer. Let's deal with what's going on inside of us, which creates that dependency and get it healed on a foundational level so we don't find ourselves back in this situation again later. That's really where we want to focus the conversation. So looking at people who say they're in a family and a loved one dies, people experience that same loss differently, just what you were saying. And the tendency is to think that one person somehow has different character or has managed to organize their life differently and kind of buck up and move on. Those are the symptomatic things in terms of what they may be doing in life. And what we really want to do is what we always do at Rock House, which is look at the deeper thing. What's going on in our own hearts? If I'm the one experiencing the grief and it's prolonged as, you know, sometimes people who come to Rock House, they've, they're realizing that they're five years, they're 10 years or even longer past a big loss in their life and time is not quote making it better because it doesn't tend to do that it may obscure it we may get distracted but it's not healing it and they're realizing that no in fact they're actually probably worse and so getting at why what else is going on in their heart what was the setup in their life their heart that the loss occurred on top of I guess is a way to look at it mm -hmm. um, back to your point about dependency 
That's what we want to get at. As we pull the curtain back on that, that's how we really start to help people. And there are a couple of fallacies that we probably ought to address that would be helpful to understand the dynamic of how grief works. And one of those is that there is no defined time. Some people feel like they have to grieve a certain period of time, and then after that grief is over, that that's, they're just going to have to keep going until they have hit that particular benchmark. If I am still grieving, then it means I just haven't grieved long enough that the, the solution is just going to be to keep grieving until it goes away, that there's a certain time at which it's just going to stop. And so there's an expectation, but that never comes still for a lot of people who are just years and decades later still grieving. So we need to get out of our time perspective. There may be some customs around how long we want to position ourselves or display that we are in a place of grief. But we need to take away the time function in terms of thinking about how we address time and what's appropriate or that that's even a dynamic that has some determination on how much grief because, again, things that determines that is really somewhere else and that's in your heart. Another fallacy is that we are doing this to honor the person who has been deceased and that needs to happen and that if I stop grieving then I've dishonored someone or I don't show how much I love the person or those kinds of displays. And then there's the piece where I have actually got a sense of my uh, worth even or how well I'm doing or how people will perceive me that if I don't grieve well. So these are again are fallacies that have to do with uh, customs and other traditions and other false beliefs around the idea of grieving, which can serve to sustain uh, the grief that people are caught up in. So back on this really important point that there's a focus on the degree of dependency that we have on the person who has passed away or whatever we have lost. The deeper the dependency, then the greater the sense of loss and grief. And so we want to take a look at that dependency and where relief is going to come from. So that's why it's not determined by time because that's not going to resolve it. And plugging something else in that place that we hope is going to just sort of serve as a distraction or a subject change kind of, whether it's an activity or a job or a ministry or even a person, that too isn't really going to resolve the level of dependency. It it can sometimes result in just a switched dependency. Mm -hmm on something else that can also end because it's a person or an endeavor or things, of course, that have an end to them. And so basically the grief is going to continue until the true loss is replaced. So we want to get at what the dependency was, what the loss represented to us to get at where God has the healing. Yes, and we're talking about The need that we all have, this is back to the divine needs, the the yearning that God has put in us to be counting on him and trusting him to fill these deep divine needs. And they are things like our sense of worth, our peace about provision, our peace about purpose, uh, the very deep things which are important to all people because we've been counting on something in the world. What we see through long-term grieving is that usually there's something really deep riding and something like a divine level of need riding on the thing that was lost. And that's why the pain is so deep and why it's so enduring and why there is no other real replacement. So from our perspective, if you just find the other thing in the world to substitute the thing that you've lost, so you've got two issues. You're going to still not completely satisfy that divine satisfaction of that issue. And the other thing is that you set yourself up to be grieving again and experience loss again because the thing that we are looking at in the world, which is not divine, is never going to fill that deep need. And so that's why it is so important that we see grieving as an opportunity to focus on the heart and heal the heart and to bring God into a place of great greater and greater trust and greater and greater dependency. We bring the end to the grief and then you're not set up to then live this grief again when something else is dependent on that is not really able to satisfy these deep yearnings that God has put all in all of us back to the Ecclesiastes 3.11 scripture. I think one situation that we see fairly commonly is when we've been in relationship with a person, maybe it's a husband or wife or a loving grandfather or a really dear aunt but a person who's done a a reasonable job relationally of representing godlike love. They've been able to make what we call deposits in our value bank, our love bank, because of the ways in which they've affirmed us or loved us. When they're gone, and particularly if it's a sudden loss, it can feel like we've lost that thing. So when you ask the question, well, what do you feel like you lost when so-and-so passed away? 
And when the answer becomes the only person who really truly knew me, the only one who really loved me, the only person who valued me, my confidant, the only one, who, the person who gave me worth or value, and, and people really can truly have a, a deep sense of unworthiness outside of being connected to this particular person who loved them well. Mm -hmm. And so when it's that kind of a sense of loss, they're revealing that what it feels like to them is it feels like God died because those are ultimate divine level need type things that they're expressing because in truth, of course, God is the only one who really fully knows us and fully loves us 100% always come through, never let us down, never die, never leave us, never disappoint us. He's, he's the only 100% assurance of those foundational things that we need, of being known and loved and valued and providing for us, comforting us, taking care of us, ultimate companionship. Earthly people, people in relationships, can do a really good relational job of that kind of thing. But when we feel like we've lost the only source of that, because the person passed away, that's the clue that we're looking to that person for a divine level filling of that need in our lives. And so understanding that, no, we haven't lost that. We've got that foundational level of being fully known and loved and valued and cherished in himself, and that will never go away. That's the essence of getting at the healing from grief can begin. Yeah, another one just to add to the list, which I think is a very practical one, is that we all have a sense of needing assurance about provision. For example, we all want to be relying on God for a sense of absolute peace about provision. God may have used our spouse or may have used a situation that's, uh, that we now don't have access to as a way to provide for us. But when we actually have our sense of peace, our sense of assurance about provision on an individual, and then when we lose that access to that person or that situation, then we lose our peace about provision. God would have us count on him 100% for provision and allow him to fulfill that promise through the things in our lives. But that's another great example where as long as that person is there and they are say it is provision and the person is a good provider and we don't really feel like we need to go make sure that we're counting on God and God alone for assurance, but we just find ourselves in this place of dependency and we lose that, then we lose the level of God-like dependency. We lose the level of peace that God can give us about provision. And it does feel like God has died because we put all of this focus on this individual that is not, or this situation that's no longer available to us. As you were talking, I had a thought that I'm not sure I, I have ever actually expressed, but I, I just remembered how as a child or somewhere in younger years, having the, the realization that my father would pass away at some time before I would, likely, and that as a physician, and he was the answer man for all of our, you know, little wounds and nicks and or more significant health problems, he was the go-to person. And I just remember having the thought that, wow, if life goes on and he's not here, I won't have any answer for my medical problems. What will I do? And just an interesting thought that, of course, God's got more answers for medical problems than just my one person, my father, who I was relying on. It's just a picture of how we can, without realizing, of course, that we're doing that at all, we're putting a person in, in that slot meant for God, because God's the bigger picture of my health, my medical needs. And, you know, as an adult, we can all look at that and know, and know that that from a practical standpoint, even with other people and resources, that they're going to be answers. But the big answer is that God's my healer, God's my protector, and he's, he's the source of answers. He provided my loving father, and he's going to provide all the other things that, that I need that he represented to me in that thought process as a child when it just hit me that, wow, how will I, how will I make it through life without him to answer that problem for me? There are many well-meaning people that usually are in the scene when we are suffering and we're grieving. And many times they suggest that we need to substitute the thing with something else or, to, or distract ourselves or to do something that would allow us to maybe refocus that need or to some activity to some other individual, uh, whatever it is. And while that is certainly well-meaning, I think it's really important to recognize that we need to make the decision. Are we going to go back to something else in the world that puts us back in the place that we are? are we, or are we going to seek God to fill that spot? That's the position everybody who is grieving is in, is that 
we have the opportunity to end the grief and fill that emptiness and the loss with God, or we can give in to the, again, well-meaning suggestions of other people to move into other activities or start dating or do something else, uh, find the next job or whatever it is. But we have the opportunity to see that if we're in this much pain, this is not God's plan. God's plan is for us to be at peace and to be resilient no matter what comes. So the opportunity now that we present to you, whoever's listening, is to consider, are you ready to move away from dependency on things in the world so that you can have this once and for all assurance about the things that you lost when you lost that person? And we want to talk about engaging you in a prayer about that. This is tremendously important. I'm just thinking of the, again, of the people who've come to Rock House. Sometimes their sense of wanting to remain in this world diminishing because of the intensity of how bad their grief has gotten over a long extended period of time and just my gratitude to the Lord for watching what he has done in their lives to completely turn that around and give them a sense of peace, assurance, meaning, purpose in life, desire to go forward, all of what's available, all from this heart change, which you can begin to launch with a simple prayer. And so we invite and encourage you to engage in this prayer and open your heart to the Lord. The first question that you have right before you move into this prayer is, what did I lose? If I'm in a place of grief right now and I'm thinking about that situation or the person or whatever it is that has has been taken from my world or I've lost that has caused this grief, the question for you right now is, what is the deep thing that is missing because that is no longer in your world? And I just want to say, Heavenly Father, just in the name of your Son, Jesus, we ask that you would reveal that to everybody's listening. What is the thing that you want to satisfy, that you want to fill, instead of the thing in the world that was the place where they went before for that? So, Lord, I just ask that you would just reveal that to them right now in Jesus' name. So be thinking about those things that came to your mind, whatever it was, those first things, those are the things that we want to pray about and ask God to replace the object of loss with his presence and his love and his assurance. So I just encourage you to enter into this prayer now. So repeat after me. Heavenly Father, please forgive me for trusting in anything or anyone other than you to fill any of my divine needs. I specifically release and reject my dependency on, fill in the blank there for what is the object of your loss? And I'll repeat it again. I specifically release and reject my dependency on, fill in the blank, to fill the needs that only you can fill, to have the peace that only you can provide me. Father, please remove from my heart any wrong dependency that I have and replace it with you and your love and your assurance. Please heal me from the ways I have suffered, from depending on the things that can't bring me peace or assurance, and replace it with your supernatural peace. Please strengthen me to resist the temptation to retain my old dependencies rather than to trust you more like Christ trusts you. I pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed by that prayer and how it leads you to this deeper place of trusting the Lord. And so please send this to anybody that you think would be blessed by this prayer and by these concepts. And we would also encourage you to refer to a couple of podcasts, which you can find on your your favorite podcast app or rockhousecenter.com but one that's entitled Embracing Dependence on God and then one entitled Why I Can't Trust God. Those two topics might really be helpful to you as kind of the next step after praying this prayer. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Bye-bye.